So let me use this guitar to demonstrate features of these strings that change pitch. So remember that pitch is how you hear the frequencies. So we are gonna be looking at the length of this string. We are gonna be looking at the thickness of these strings and the tension applied on these strings. Let's start with length. I'm going to pluck one string and listen its frequency. When the length of a string is changed, it vibrates with a different frequency. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press this string to change the length of its vibration. So, that is a higher pitch. So, shorter strings have higher frequency and therefore higher pitch. Thick strings vibrate slower and have lower frequency than thin ones. This means that the thin string has higher pitch. So let me pluck the thick one, lower pitch, and I'm going to pluck the thinner one, higher pitch. A string is stretched between two points, here and here, create a tension. So, tension refers to how tightly the string is stretched. Tightening the string gives a higher frequency. So, let's, let's uh, do an experiment here. I'm going to lose a little bit this thick string. And let's listen the frequency. Now I'm going to tighten. And let's listen the frequency. And this is tension. A string vibrates with a particular fundamental frequency. Now we have two questions. One is what happens when you make the string shorter, thicker, thinner, tighter, looser, or make out of different materials? So we are going to this website and we are going to try this interactive simulation. I want to take you to this website, NDT, Non-Destructive Testing Resource Center. On the frequency and pitch window, you can find an interactive simulation to verify how the pitch of this string changes to higher or lower, depending on the string physical features. We have four options to compare the pitch by changing one variable at a time. Let's go from top to bottom. So this is the original string. Let's pluck and listen its pitch. Now, let's listen when the string is shorter. That's right, we listen a higher pitch. In this second option, both strings have the same length, but the bottom one is thicker. So let's listen when we pluck each one and compare. The thick string has a lower pitch. Okay, now what, we, what if we keep the same length and thickness for both strings, but we change the materials? So let's listen for copper and let's listen for steel. Okay, so sounds like the steel has a higher pitch. Finally, let's tighten one string and create a higher tension and loosening the bottom one and creating 
a higher, a lower tension. Now let's play and compare. So it sounds like the higher tension has a higher pitch. How to change a string pitch? Now pitch is how we identify a frequency, how we listen a frequency. When the original string was plucked, it vibrated with a specific frequency, which is called fundamental or first frequency. Now it's possible to produce different frequencies by changing the physical features of this string. In this interactive simulation, I compare the pitch of four different physical features with the original string. And the simulation results from NDT Resource Center website are listed below. The length, shorter strings have higher frequency, therefore higher pitch. Thickness, thicker strings have lower pitch. Tension, so tension refers how tightly the string is stretched. So tightening the string produce higher tension. Um, so those higher tension strings produce higher pitch. Material composition. So depending on the material, so the string made of denser materials like steel have higher pitch than strings made of less dense materials like copper. So now how are you going to incorporate tension and density of the materials to calculate speed and other variables of a standing wave or a harmonic? So remember, this is our fundamental frequency. So this is the sequence that you are already familiar with. So we know that in this, in this string, um, can fit half of a wavelength. So this is the vibrating string and uh, deriving the wavelength from this formula is two times the length of the string. So use the speed of the wave, which is a wavelength times frequency. Now make the substitution and uh, make the frequency in terms of speed and length. So that's the final formula for our frequency, fundamental frequency. So now let's incorporate the velocity of the string in terms of the tension, in terms of the density of the string, which means the material that makes the string. So T is the string tension in Newton, in tension is a force. Um, and uh, the, this density is called string linear density in units of kilograms per meter. So we are going to represent it by the Greek letter mu. So we know that our harmonic, first harmonic fundamental frequency is speed over two times the length. So now we are going to replace the speed by this formula. So our final formula is this. So 1 over 2L times V, which is square root over uh, of uh, tension over mu. So let's do a couple of problems. Example 1. The linear density of the A string of a violin is 7.8 times 10 to the minus 4 kilos per meter. A wave on the string has a frequency of 440 hertz in a wavelength of 65 centimeter. What is the tension of this string? So this is what was given. The length of the string, now in meter, the frequency, the string linear density, that's what it is, which is mu, and is looking for the string tension. So we need to calculate first the speed of this wave, and you have all the components for that. So we have the wavelength, and we have the frequency. So the speed of the wave is that 0.65 times 440, which is 286 meters per second. So now we are going to use this value to find the tension. 
So we need to rearrange this formula. So how we are going to do, we are going to um, square both sides. So when we do, the square root here is going to disappear. Uh, now we can do cross multiplication. So t is equal mu times v square. Um, so v is 286 squared times the linear density. So the tension is 63.8 newtons. Pretty straightforward. Let's go to our second example. On a shallow, the string with the largest linear density, 1.56 times 10 to the minus 2 kilos per meter, is the C string. The string produces a fundamental frequency of 65.4 hertz and has a length of 0.8 meter between the two fixed ends. Find the tension in this string. So here is our data, what was given in the problem, the length, the frequency, the string linear density, and is looking for the string tension. So we need to rearrange the equation um, in function of the tension. So that's our original equation. So what we're going to do here is we are going to do cross multipli multiplication 2L with F. So now it's right here and you keep this uh, square root of T over mu. I add the two here just for you understand the next step which is, I'm going to um, square both sides. When I do, the square root is going to disappear because it's going to be 2 over 2 is 1. Um, now I'm going to make my substitution 2 times the length, which is 0 0.8. The frequency is 65.4. All these square is equal to the tension over the linear density. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cross multiplication again, and t is equal to times all these numbers here, square, times the um, linear density. So my final answer is the tension is 100, almost 171 newtons. Okay. So let's go to our last example. Example three, a string of length. Uh, 0 0.28 meter is fixed at both ends. The string is plucked and a stand wave is set up that is vibrating at its first harmonic. So just that go up and down. The traveling wave that make up the standing waves make a speed of 140 meters per second. So what is the frequency of vibration? So that was, was given. And, uh, and this is what it's talking about, our first harmonic. So we know that we are going to use the first frequency formula. So the speed is 140 over 2 times L. So our first frequency is 250 hertz. Now the second question is asking for the frequency of the second, third, and fourth harmonic of this string. So it's pretty easy. You are going to use the formula that we learned previously. Um, that's the general formula for fundamental frequency for the all harmonics in terms of the fundamental frequency. So we have the fundamental frequency, F1. So the second, third, and fourth harmonic is going to be like two times the first frequency, three times the first frequency, and four times the first frequency. So now we have the sequence of harmonics. So we did three examples with what we applied today that we learned about um, that we can incorporate now tension and density in our study of sound waves. Humans typically are capable of detecting sounds with frequencies from above 20 hertz to around 20,000 hertz. So this range is called audible frequencies. Like humans, animals can detect 
sounds with a wide range of frequencies. Some animals can hear higher frequencies than humans. Bats and whales. This range is called ultrasound. While others, like elephants, communicate with frequencies below the human hearing range, which is called infrasound. So this table shows a typical frequency range that some animals can detect sound. For example, the lowest one is the elephant from, from 14 hertz to 16 hertz. It's really low compared with humans have a wide range of hearing. And then we have birds, cats, dogs, and the higher ones are bats and whales, which are the ultrasound. So frequencies below 20 hertz is called infrasound. And frequencies above 20,000 hertz is called ultrasound. On the next slide, we are going to test our human hearing range. The range of human hearing is between 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. So let's test our hearing using this online tone generator and slide the frequency tab from 1 hertz up to 20,000 hertz and listen our acoustic range. We notice that we are more sensitive to sounds between 200 Hz up to 12,000 Hz.